Um, hello, so today we are going to do um, problems from bi-weekly contest 93, uh, 96 so that happened today. So the second problem is minimum operations to make array equal. Um, so we get two arrays, nums1 and nums2, and they are of equal length. Um, and we get an integer k. And we want to perform some operations. And I an operation basically consists of taking two indices from the first for the first array and incrementing one and decrementing the other by this k value, okay? So let's say k was three, then one operation would be taking two uh, positions, let's say maybe zero and three, and then incrementing by three at position zero and decrementing by three in position three, okay? Um, so in two different positions, one we add k and the other one we minus, we subtract k and that's considered one operation. and that's the only type of operations we are allowed to do okay and we want to using the this operation as many times as we want we want to um, make nums1 be equal to nums2 okay but we want to minimize the number of operations we make and if it's not possible to make them equal by adding and subtracting k by doing this operation then we want to return minus one um, okay so that's the idea here now how do uh, let's take a look at this example first to make sure we understand and then we can uh, we can solve it so here for example um, what we can do is take this four subtract three but at the same time we need to find a place where we add three and so let's maybe add it here because this one needs to be seven so we add three here so with that we'll end up with um, four minus one one and then three and then adding the three to this position here would we'd end up with four right and then the second operation will take this basically and then add three to this one because we are allowed to only add k so add three to this one and then subtract um, three from this one that way we get one three seven one which is the exact um, uh, array as nums two the same values as nums two and so how many operations we did we did one first here and then a second one here so we did two operations total um, if you take a look at the second one it's not possible um, you can try manually but it won't be possible so it's a minus one so that's the idea um, now let's see how we can solve it um, okay so let's see how we can solve this so the operations we are allowed to do um, are only two um, so we can or only uh, do a pair of plus k and minus k on different positions or we can th th actually it's only w one operation right but it consists of two things uh, adding k and subtracting k okay um, and what the minimum ones um, so I think first let's ask ourselves a question which is when when can't we make num equal to nums2 under what condition it's not possible to make nums1 equal to nums2 with these operations, right? Um, and the answer there is that, well, if making a position, let's say, for example, if uh, this one here was um, 2. Let's say we had 2, 3, 1, 4 as nums1. And let's say nums2 was um, maybe still 1, 3, uh, 7, 1, right? Then here immediately you can think, okay, you you never can make two equal to one with this with adding k or subtracting k, right? And so this is not possible immediately. But how do we tell? Um, you could just say by the fact that two minus one is equal to one, right? And so one is th one is not divisible by three, okay? Um, So one is not divisible by three, and then immediately you can say that you, you return minus one because f to be for this to be possible, you need to either add k or subtract k, right? To make so basically, let's say a one is part of nums one, um, and let's say a two is part of nums two, right? To be able to transform a one to a two, you need the difference, the absolute value of the difference, to be divisible by k. Because otherwise, that means no matter how many k's you add or how many k's you try to subtract, you won't be able to make one to make one equal the other. And if you are not able to make one equal the other, then you can't make the entire array equal to the entire array. So that's the core idea here: is that 
we can just go through the indices for i for each one um, and just compare 4 minus 1 is that divisible by k if it's not immediately to minus 1 so that's the first observation here um, the second thing is that um, this so let's just call this out clearly so one is that if the difference let's say maybe the let's call it d which is equal to then a position i minus the number the same number in two in nums two if this d here is not divisible by k that means we won't be able to make the arrays equal at all so we can immediately return minus one okay now the other thing that comes to mind okay so let's say they are divisible how do we um, how do we identify the number of operations, the minimum number of operations? Remember, that's what we are asked to do. We are asked about the min number of operations. And that's where we need to compute the differences, right? So that we can know how many we need to add and how many we need to subtract, right? And so let's say for we can just try to, um, to keep track of them. So let's say here, let's just keep track of them. So let's say we have... Um, the increment value and the decrement value. So this will track how many times we need to increment and this will track how many times we need to decrement, right? And so here, how do we identify how many times we need to increment? So between we, we just do 4 minus 1 and that gives us 3 and immediately we know we need to um, inc decrement just once, right? How do we get that value? Well, it's just going to be comparison, right? If, let me just basically do inc and then decrement. How do we know whether to add to increment or decrement? Well, if the number at, uh, in nums1 is bigger than nums2, then that means we need to decrement, right? But if it's smaller, let's say, for example, this one here to 7, that means we need to add to be able to reach this 7, right? Um, if it's smaller than the number in the same position in nums2, that means we need to decrement. If it's bigger or equal, that means we need to um, decrement, right? And so here, by how much we need to decrement, that becomes the question, right? And we will need to add it, of course, because we'll keep track of it for all the elements in the array. So we'll keep track of it for i in range of n. So, well, f let's say, for example, for this case, 4 minus 1, right? It's equal to 3, okay? So we know that we need to do one operation, just add k, because k equal to 3. And so it's just divided by k. Let's say the um, let's say it w here we had 8, and here we had still, or maybe here we had, um, uh, yeah, 8 should be good. 8 and here 1. Um, or let me actually say we had 10 even. So let's say here we had 10, then 10 minus 1 is equal to 9, Right, and we know we need to add three three times, right, to get um to get from uh, t uh we need to decrement three times, right, to get from ten to one, okay, and so um and that three times is just n divided nine divided by k, right? So basically, it's just going to be the difference. Let's call the difference d, and so it's going to be d divided by k. And similarly, for decrement, it's going to be the number of times we decrement is going to be d divided by k. Okay, so now we have how many times we increment and we have how many times we decrement. So how do we return the number of operations? And but, uh, uh, notice here, we did only the increments and decrement that we have to do, right? And so the problem says we pair an increment with a decrement, right? So we just pair these two, right? But to be able to pair them, we need to have the same number of increments as the same number of decrement because if we have to increment four times and we have to decrement just two times then it's not possible right because you don't have a pair uh, an operation of increment to pair with of a decrement to pair with the two decrements left here right so let's say this is the number of increments and number of decrements right then there are two in increment operations that you don't have a decrement operation to pair them with so here Basically, only if the number of increments is that we counted here in this loop is the same as the number of decrement that we have a solution, right? 
otherwise we just return minus one but what is that solution well it's just the number of increments right because let's say you ha we had five increments and five decrements then how many operations we need we just need five right because we pair each increment with each decrement and so here we just return increment and that should be pretty much it right um now just to reiterate here what are the two things we need to do the first one is that we traverse the array and if every time any time we find that the difference is not divisible by k we just um, we just um, exit immediately because that means um, we can't make a number equal to the other right the other one is just we keep track of the overall number of increments we need to do and the overall number of decrements in terms of k we need to do and then if they are equal that means we can pair them and so we return the, their number otherwise we return minus one okay now so that's the main algorithm there is just one edge case that we have to remember to take care of and that edge case is basically if k is equal to zero so w what happens if k equal to zero well basically this tells us that we can we can only increment zero or decrement zero so basically it means we can't change nums one okay so if we can't change n nums one then um how many operations do we need well it's only if they are equal so here only if they are equal that we can that it's possible to make one equal to the other because we have z zero we, ca we can't add anything and we can't subtract anything so here only if they are equal the number of operation is how many well zero because we, we do nothing but if they are different then we can't make them equal because we we can't add anything and we can't subtract anything so here we just return minus one okay um so this is just each case that we need to remember to handle um but the crux of the algorithm is what we saw above right um okay so now let's think a little bit about time complexity of our solution so we just do one pass here on all the eyes for the length of the array and we just do this constant check um and we we do this return at the end right so this tells us basically that overall our time complexity is o of n in terms of space we are only using this increment uh, value and this inc decrement value um, other than that not much so we have o of, n, uh, o of one space so o of n time and we are using o of one space okay and that's pretty much it for this problem um, yeah so let's uh, code it up and make sure it passes our test cases um, okay, so what do we need to do here? Um, we said that first we need to handle the edge case of k equal to zero. Um, so let's just implement that one. Um, and then if they are equal, then we return zero, otherwise we return minus one, right? And then after that, we just need to set up our uh, variables. So we need n and we need decrement and increment uh, counters. Um, and then we go through the array up to n. And then we, there's only one thing is that if the elements are equal then we don't need to do anything right we don't need to subtract we don't need to decrement so we can just continue uh, but otherwise we just get the difference between position i and uh, position um, and we want this in absolute value right because um, we will store decrement and increment separately so um, we will identify if it's a decrement using comparing the values in the array but what we want to count is just how many we need to decrement right and so we need just the absolute value and so here if um, the number in i uh, at in nums of one is smaller than the one in nums two we want to this means we need to increment the number in nums one right and so we need to do inc one uh, plus d divided by k otherwise it's bigger th so we need to decrement by the same amount okay um and then the other thing is we said if the if the difference here is not divisible by k that means we can never um uh, make nums one uh at i equal to nums two at i right because it's not divisible by k so no matter we can't we can't add a number of k or subtract a number of k's to make them equal right so we're at minus one now at the end once we did all of this we just want to check if the same number of increments is equal to s the number of decrements that means there is a solution right we can pair them up and that's the number of operations we have but otherwise we can't right 
uh, remember an operation has to be both an increment and a decrement so if we can't pair then we're at 10 minus 1 okay and so let's run this let's submit and this does uh, pass our test cases and again a time complexity o of n a space complexity is o of 1 um, yeah so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and see you on the next one bye